Um, and so this time I'm going to talk to you about a prospective study about long-term urological outcome of men born with hypospadias. And this is a study we have been doing uh, with, uh, with Austria. Um, we, it's a teamwork between Ghent University Hospital and Vienna Hospital. Alex will be presenting in a few minutes the psychological outcomes. Now I will present the urological outcomes and tomorrow we will present also the endocrine outcomes. And so basically what we did is that we called back all the hypospadias that were operated in our centers more than 15, 15 years ago. So we included uh, patients aged 16 to 23 and uh, we recruited control students the same age to compare their results. And this is the population we have. Uh, we have 192 hypospadias, and you see the proportions between distal, midshaft, proximal, and complex. Of course, we have a higher population of distal hypospadias. And what we did in this population is look at a few things. First of all, we looked at uh, Euroflow. We did also a post-void ultrasound, a genital exam, and a scrotal ultrasound. Uh, this is for the urological outcome. The rest you will see in the next talk. And so those are the results for, uh, regarding the Euroflow. First of all, the Euroflow was abnormal in 18% of those men. 18% uh, of those men has mostly a plateau curve. Even if they had no complaint, they still had it. Um, when we looked at those plateau curve and we tried to sort if the grade of hypospadias made a difference, the answer is no. The grade of the hypospadias, proximal or distal, made no difference uh, regarding the aspect of the, of, of the curve, which is interesting. Uh, only five men had uh, post void residue, and those five men were not proximal cases. Also an interesting finding. Looking further, um, genital exam, only 11 people out of the 192 uh, had fistula, but which is really interesting is that those people came to the office because they were asked to. They had no complaint. They had a fistula, but they didn't seek treatment for it. And when we look at those people having a fistula, there was, there was no difference in severity regarding the hypospadias. There were still patients also, 47 out of 192, who had so, still subcoronal or coronal hypospadias, even if they had been treated, uh, which is also interesting, but still it was for patients with no complaint. It was more present in patients with proximal hypospadias. Looking further at the ultrasound, we found interesting numbers of patients presenting uh, microcalcifications. There was, the interesting thing is that there were no difference between the controls and the hypospadias, and no di difference within the grade of the hypospadias. Also, interesting, we found a high prevalence of varicocele in both populations. So these are the findings. You see the varicocele. If you look at the hypospadias, almost one third of the hypospadias population presented uh, from low grade to high grade varicocele. I couldn't find anything in the literature about that. And if you look at the control, they still had uh, varicocele, but like in the, the, it's known in the populations. Looking further, um, the genital exam, how the patients were happy with how it presented. We gave those patients the penile uh, perception score and the hope score, and uh, we tried to see if it was, uh, if it was, if there was the same data. It was a good inter-observer agreement. And looking further, actually, those patients, the, when you look at the hypospadias on the left, there were something like 20% of the hypospadias who were uh, very satisfied. There were uh, a higher population which was satisfied and quite low population which was dissatisfied. And what's interesting is that those uh, numbers are comparable with the general population. So and we, if we look per further ac actually to what all men consider important, the penile lengths, um, looking at the hyp hypospadias, there was quite a high number of the patients who were not satisfied, so you see dissatisfied with the penile lengths, but we saw exactly the same number as the general population. So basically, with hyperpedias or without hyperspedias, many men complain with the length of their penis and complain about the aspect of their penis. 
So our conclusions right now is that we might sometimes have a suboptimal urological outcome in young adults who were underwent hyperspadias repairing child adulthood in our point of view, but they don't complain about it most of the times. So the perceptions of patients and physicians about the outcome of hyperspadia surgery should be analyzed to, uh, to different uh, criteria. And most hyperspadias were satisfied with the appearance of their penis. We found for some reason we cannot explain a high rate of varicocele uh, post hyperspadia surgery. And um, we need post follow-up of hyperspadia cases for, to see the long-term complications. Thank you for your attention.